Hello, hello, hello. How are you guys doing? Okay. Gosh, Molly Golatly, I keep hearing all these crazy things come out of your mouth. Oh my gosh. I just keep thinking it, she can't say anything more stupid, but then you do. But then you do. First of all, you don't want to be lied on, but you sure don't mind lying on other people. I don't understand your way of thinking. I mean, why is it okay for you to lie? You know what I mean? Because you sure as hell lied on me and I proved that you lied on me. Saying that I didn't respond to your text and and you're not one and and I proved that I did. Proved that I did. And then you want to say that you're not one to tell people where to go? Bitch. You got mad at me because I was in Mallory at Random's live in her chat. You got mad at me for being in there. And then you got mad at me for calling you out on being you being wrong. You come in there being ugly and disrespectful to her when she didn't do anything to justify the way you were acting. And all I did was say, hey, hey, you guys are friends. Don't act like this. And then you start timing people out and deleting people. And I said, stop it. Stop it. So you didn't like that. So you called me. And before we got off the phone call that day, you accused me of doing something that I have never done. And you called me a liar. Accused me of hiring you, trying to hire you as a life coach when I joined your Patreon. Okay, that don't even make sense because you advertise if you join my Patreon, you get a free life coaching session. Okay, first of all, that's not why I joined your Patreon. I never used that benefit. Not once did I ever use the benefit. As a matter of fact, Marissa, you declared to me numerous times that I should be a life coach. I should be a life coach. Have you ever thought about being a life coach, Barnyard? You've got such wisdom. No, I haven't ever thought about that. Yeah, you are so full of yourself. It's not even funny. So now you're trying to, I guess you're, it looks like you're trying to put a spin on it that since, you know, you've left the group or they left you, that you're done and that that's what your problem has been. And now everything, you're going to try to act like everything's going to go back to normal. Marissa, you had problems before you ever joined that little posse. Now, granted, you didn't do yourself any favors when you joined it. You made yourself look like a, a crazy person, certifiable crazy. But you had issues before that. You say, oh, I don't tell people where to go. Girl, first of all, Mallory at random, you didn't appreciate me going there. Then when I went into John's live, somebody sent you a screenshot of me being in there. Like I give two rats ass about that. Um. And you called me up and confronted and asked me why I was in there. And I have the text messages where you told me that you didn't want to be friends anymore because I was told not to, I wouldn't, I broke the rules. I went places that I wasn't need to Marissa. Apparently you laid the groundwork out in the very beginning about where people can go. People not going to your haters or whatever, going in their chats. First of all, you never did that. Because if you had ever tried to lay any kind of groundwork out for me, bitch, that would have been the end of our uh, relationship right then and there. So I see you getting on there and, you know, you treated Mallory like crap. You've treated all your friends like crap. Whenever you want to drop your mouth open, whenever Tina says that you were abusive, uh, what do you think that means? Marissa, you were abusive. First of all, you didn't care about your friendships. When I told you that Tina was really sick, your response was, oh, fuck that. Everybody, we're all sick. We're all fucking dying. After we have sit there and listened to you for a freaking six months bellyache about having a supposedly brain tumor. I mean, we listened to you cry about that. And then we've listened to you cry about Princess and you uh, making such a big deal about him. He's dying and all that stuff. No, he's not dying, Marissa. All he needs to do is go to rehab, quit drinking, and he can get, save his life and get himself back in control. But the worst thing he could have done was move in with you because you are 
an enabler. And like you said yourself, you don't know what you're doing. You can't fix him. He's the only one that can fix him. Him and rehab. But he's got to want it first, Marissa. You can't make him want something he doesn't want. Surely to God you know that. You're a life coach, right? I mean, I I mean, gosh, girl, I'm just blown away. I'm blown, just whenever I think you can't say anything more stupid and get up there and lie, you do. And I don't know what you're talking about. You were done with uh, Bullhorn Freddie, Blowhard Freddie, because of um, because she took a white white boy lockdown back. That's not even true. Her or Laura. First of all, Matt and Noel don't want to have anything to do with Blowhorn Betty, Freddie, whatever her name is. And Mar uh, Laura's never even talked to to him. So. What's your excuse now? What's your excuse now? That's not true, Marissa. That's a lie. That is a lie. The reason you fell out with them. I think, in my own opinion, I think that you were way too much for them. I think that you took their what they're trying to make it look like they're on the up and up and they're a professional little group, which I think I disagree with, but she tries to act like she's, you know, you're, you take all the professionalism out of that whole little scene. The things that you said, the, the things that you said to Don and Candace were beyond cringeworthy. Marissa. And then you want to get up there and say that you believe in, and you, you're all about a, Innocent until proven guilty. Mm, bitch, I beg to differ, because if you were, you wouldn't get up there and have called and said to those people the things that you said to them. And look, you had a celebratory beer, Corona, as a matter of fact, to celebrate Don losing his job. But you didn't mean for that to happen. That's sorry. That's sorry as hell that you would find any kind of joy in someone losing their job. The man is trying to, I mean, he still supports his children, the boys, Marissa. How is he supposed to send child support and support his boys? How is he supposed to buy a dog feed? Y'all running around and saying stuff to them like, where is she? And I mean, if, he, if they thought that, oh, Marissa, so many things are wrong about the things that you've said. You cannot talk to people the way you talk to them and expect to get anything back except a hand. Nobody wants to talk to someone that is so degrading. You degrade people. You are belligerent the way you sound. You defame. You defame those people. I mean, girl, I would... <laughs> Listen, I would have press charges on you. You would have press charges on you, Marissa. Had the shoe been on the other foot, you would have press charges on you. Come on. The best thing you need to do is you need to take a break. You need to step back. <clears throat> back away, boo-boo. It's time to turn off. You need to figure out what you want to do and, and get there because girl, you are making yourself look like a idiot. You are running rampant on here. You're going in so many damn different directions. You don't, you don't know which way to come up at. I'm embarrassed for you. I have been so embarrassed for you. I mean, I've sat back and I've watched you treat your so-called friends like shit. And then you want to get up there and bellyache when things don't go right for you. You don't deserve this. My ass, you don't deserve it. You get what you give, girl. You get what you give. Let that, let that soak in for a little bit. When you get up there and say, I don't deserve this, I deserve better. You're getting exactly what you deserve, Marissa. You, you're getting it. You put out shitty shit, you're going to get shitty shit right back to you. People can only take so much. Most people have a limit to where they're not going to take no more bull crap. I reached mine a long ago, and I'm so glad I did. I wish I reached it sooner than I did. You need to do some self-evaluation. Listen to this life coach. Listen to this. Since you told me I should have been a life coach, 
listen to me. Let me give you a little of my life coaching advice. Everybody makes mistakes, Marissa. Everybody. We're, none of us are perfect. But in my past, when I've made mistakes, I've stood in my own shit. When I stand in it, stood in it, smelled it, I decided I didn't want to make that mistake again. So I chose different paths from that point on. I am who I am today because of what I've been through in my life. But by no means do I use my past as an excuse I use that my past as a building block to go up from there and not go back down and not do things that I shouldn't have done or make bad choices or let people run over me. You know, I'm 53, 54, 54, gosh. And I can tell you this much. I don't be around people that I don't, like being around or that doesn't bring anything positive to my life. I made that choice several years ago. I don't have to entertain people that don't bring something good to my life and that are not good people. So our friendship coming to an end was already ending before you got mad about me going in John Crimes live. And you said in a text message, I better not ever screw you over. I have never screwed you over, Marissa. I'm speaking the truth right now. I haven't, I haven't screwed you over. I don't go around screwing people over and being destructive in my life. I don't do that. I have got friends from where I made friends in grammar school, elementary. I'm still friends with those people. Everywhere I've ever lived, I still have friends that live in those places that I could call at the drop of a dime if I need something. Because that's the kind of friend I am. So you need to, what you need to do, my life coaching experience, is you need to stand in your own shit. If, hell, maybe bathe in it if you need to. But you need to start being kind to princess. And you need to get him in rehab, Marissa. If you're going to do anything and help him, if you want to help your friend, sincerely help your friend, that's like family, get him in rehab or show him tough love because you're letting him kill himself by not getting help. He either needs to accept that he's got a problem and start getting help for it, or you need to put him out on his ass until he realizes that he's got a problem, Marissa. But you need to quit talking to people like they are beneath you. You said the other day in your life, oh, they live in a trailer. Oh, there's nothing wrong with living in the trailer, you said. Well, if there's nothing wrong with living in a trailer, Marissa, then why did you even say that? Why would you even say, oh, they live in a damn trailer or whatever? Like it was something degrading. There's trailer parks, mobile home parks all across this country that people live in. And I've been in some that is as nice as your home, as nice as my home. So that's one thing, Marissa, when you say stuff like that, that is the most degrading, ugly thing that you could say. Quit talking about people like they are beneath you, like you are some damn special uh, life coach because you're not. Marissa, you're embarrassing. Log off. Maybe there is something wrong with your brain. Maybe that lesion has grown or something because you definitely have changed and uh, are not a very nice person. So my advice to you as a life coach that I should have been, as per you, Marissa, was you need to log off, boo-boo. You need to quit putting people down. You need to quit looking down your nose at people like they are beneath you. Because you're no better than anybody else, girlfriend. Your little world could crash uh, with a snap of the fingers just like anybody else's. You're no better, Marissa. Pay attention to your family. Your family needs you. You need to pay attention to your family. Quit worrying about YouTube because I think you have gotten 
in over your head, girlfriend. You have bitten off more than you can chew, Marissa. You lie and don't even realize you're lying. You say you don't lie on here, but you do lie, Marissa. You do lie. It can be proven that you lie. You get people to do your dirty work for you. You're no better than Tiffany Marie. And then you lie about what you make after you go on there and say, I can show you how to make 12000 instead of 2000 After you say shit like that, then you want to go on there and lie and say that you don't make what you make when it's out there for people to see what you make, Marissa. Nobody gives a shit. I don't care what you make. But you asking people to donate money for you to go up there and be little and be belligerent to a couple that you don't know any more than I do what happened to their daughter is, re is ridiculous. Anybody that funded you should be ashamed of themselves. Anybody that funded you. And uh, uh, also for your little co cohort, little um, Walter. Oh, whatever his name is. Justice for... I heard what he said last night. Listen, listen, Marissa, you can't go on here and lie on people like you've done on me and other people and expect people to sit back and not say something to you and not debunk you. I don't have your number. Don't want your number. But you need to quit lying. All right, I'm done. I just, man, I've been listening to some little thick, little uh, clips here and there, and it blows my mind to hear some of the crap you say. So anyway, today's Friday, everyone. Woohoo! I hope you all have a great weekend. It's colder than a well digger's butt here. It's uh, 34 degrees, so it's cold here on the coast of Mississippi. But anyway, hope you guys have a great weekend. I'll see you in the YouTube streets.